One of the biggest talking points this season has been this, the Gen 3 Evo car. It really has sent shockwaves through the paddock. Advanced aero, instant acceleration, all-wheel drive. James, talk us through four-wheel drive. What does that actually mean to the drivers during the course of the race? It's another step in technology for Formula E. It's a huge challenge for the engineers, huge challenge for the drivers. For the first time, they're going to be able to use the front axle and the front powertrain to accelerate off corners, in the duels, and at the start of the race. Having access to this all-wheel drive is going to be quite strategic. It's going to be quite the advantage. Yeah, first of all, they're going to shoot like cannonballs off the start line, <laughs> and we're going to see record times from 0 to 100, probably maybe below two seconds even, which is very fast. The biggest difference is doing attack mode. If the guys in front are not on all-wheel drive, they're going to get overtaking very easily. So the driver is going to try to maximize the attack mode as much as possible. And it's the beauty of Formula E with the electric motor. You can fit in the, the, the motor right here. You wouldn't be able to do that with a combustion engine. So we're really maximizing the efficiency of electric racing. Another big change to you this season are these, the tires. Completely different compound. What have we learned from testing? What's the feedback been from the drivers? It's very, very difficult to get these tyres in the window. They've changed the compound, so the actual stiffness and the chemicals they use to make the tyre are different. And that's a different challenge. To get the tyre in a working window is the name of the game in qualifying. And I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get it right this weekend. We talked a lot about tyre deg as well during the practice sessions. How hard is it going to be for the drivers, particularly in this heat and that track surface, to manage that to get to the end of the race? Yeah, many aspects for the drivers. And I think the biggest one is to get the peak out of the tyre for the qualifying because this new tyre is 1.5 seconds faster at its optimum compared to last year's tyre, but only for one lap maximum. It used to be that you could do the slaps repetitively and there was not much deg. So that's for the qualifying. Then for the race, obviously, there's a big drop at the beginning, then a bit less, and then a bit more at the end. So let's see how the, the drivers manage the thermal aspect and the wear as well. So they want to maximize the attack mode to keep a lot of juice in the tire as well to be able to overtake most drivers. So it's going to be very strategic. Last year, the tires were not so, so much in a, a, a thing for the strategy, mm -hmm. but now it's a big effect. Let's talk about the changes to the aero as well. It's definitely had a bit of a nose job, which I'm very much in need of. Um, James, point us out the big changes that we can see. So the front wing, we saw many times in the last few years, a lot of damage in this area, and it's been reinforced. I believe there's going to be a lot of lunges down the inside of competitors with that nose, just knowing that it's probably not going to get damaged as badly as the last couple of seasons. Love it. Um, and also, the air has changed slightly here as well, hasn't it? Yeah, actually, it even starts from here. It's a bit more profiled, a bit more um, sleek, and also here the car is a bit slimmer, so the drivers were complaining about the visibility in the mirror, so it clears up the view a bit more. And then we have these flaps here in front of the rear wheel, so overall the car is a little bit more efficient, so it's less energy hungry, and we might see even better top speed. Thank you.